In this video, we'll eliminate ringing from your prints. I'm sure all of you have noticed as you try to increase the rate of acceleration and the print speeds on your prints, you end up with, with these ringing patterns. Um, they're actually, at least normally, fairly impossible to get rid of. And the only thing you can do about it is just slow your printer down. Of course, we're trying to hit big speeds here. We want these to be done as quickly as possible. In this case, you're seeing um, I actually had an acceleration set at the top of this print at 7,000 millimeters per second squared, and this was at a, a print rate of 100 millimeters per second. If you take a look at the Clipper documentation, which is what I'm using, they lay out this process, they give you this test print to print, and then once you print it, um, along with the script that increases your acceleration as you reach the top of the print, you're supposed to measure um, these ringing formations. And then based on these, there's a simple mathematical calculation you can use. And uh, once you do, you can turn on input shaping with Clipper and set the values based on your calculation, and you should see an improvement. And if we take a look at this, this is the exact same print, and you can see it's definitely improved quite a bit but we still have ringing here. And uh, I was really hoping for better than this. I want to be able to print with an acceleration of 7,000 millimeters per second squared or better on a regular basis. And uh, this, this just wasn't cutting it. Um, I also, although the instructions were easy, I honestly had a hard time measuring maybe my vision, you know, I don't know what the issue here is, but I really struggled with this. I tried multiple times and couldn't get it to work right. So it turns out Clipper actually has the ability to measure ringing on its own. And you do that with this ADXL345. It's an accelerometer on a chip and you typically purchase this on the circuit board. And this is about $5 or less. Um, I think I got a pack of three for frankly under $10. And uh, what will happen is you'll need to connect this temporarily to your um, uh, on it, to your print head, actually. And uh, to connect this, uh, you're going to need some cabling. You're going to need a six conductor cable at least. In this case, I'm using some old Cat5 Ethernet cabling that I no longer use. I clipped off the connectors on the end. It's eight conductor. I really only need the six, uh, but that'll work. It's also a lightweight cable, which is really kind of nice. You'll need to make sure it's long enough to reach from your Pi or your controller to uh, the print head easily. Um, you'll also need to crimp on some DuPont connectors. Um, I didn't have any bare connectors sitting around, but I did have this ribbon cable, which has them pre-attached, so I'm going to use it. And you'll also need to 3D print this mount so you can mount this um, to your print head. It'll depend on which print head you're using, and you'll need, in this case, some M3 screws to connect it to the print head. So here, starting with a ribbon cable with the DuPont connectors, I'm going to pull off uh, the six conductors that I need and that's a super easy thing to do and then I'm trimming off the uh, uh, DuPont connectors on one end uh, so I'll have the maximum amount of wire here to work with so here I decided to take two of the wires and twist them onto one of the other so I end up with six conductors and I assume the double wires here I would actually use um, for positive and ground to the circuit board this didn't turn out to be one of my most brilliant ideas. I would recommend you not do this and just use six of the eight wires and uh, you should get along just fine, especially once you tin these. So I've also stripped the ribbon cable and here I am uh, connecting the wires uh, one by one, twisting them together and then soldering them together. Uh, I tried to match the colors as best I could because some of these colors do exist on the Cat5 cable but you're going to have to use your imagination on some of the others. And also, if you pay attention, look real closely. I also have yellow heat shrink tubing here, and you have to be careful to not let the wire get too hot so that tubing uh, doesn't start to shrink on you, which makes it impossible. Um, but in general, just go through and connect these all together. Once that's complete, uh, go to the other side of the Cat5 cable and uh, tin the ends of the wire. These wires will be the ends that are soldered into the circuit board holding the ADXL345. 
I placed the link to this page in the posting of the video. Um, but here you can have a look and see uh, the colors and the pins they're expected to go to as well as where they end up on the circuit board as well. And I simply followed this and followed the colors as closely as I could. And here I inserted the tin wires in their respective um, positions based on the chart we just looked at. And soldering goes really quite quick here. And again, I put some heat shrink tubing here as well that I'm gonna use to cover up these wires in the end. So here I'm simply uh, screwing um, or attaching the circuit board uh, to the 3D printed mount. And this mount will then of course connect uh, to the print head. In this case, I'm using an afterburner print head and this will connect to the shroud directly. I also use some painter's tape to label the other end um, where the DuPont connectors are that'll connect to the Raspberry Pi. Um, to make sure uh, they match uh, exactly where the wires end up on the other side here, um, just to make sure you don't make any mistakes plugging this in. Also, on the Pi, the full 5 volt power pins are not available to you because we're using those pins to connect to the spider, which is where the Pi gets its power from. Uh, this uh, ADXL345, the power requirements are confusing. I could not find consistent and regular documentation. Some places tell you you can't go over 4 volts. Other places tell you that there's actually a voltage regulator on board that it's expecting 5 volts. When I tried to run Accelerator Query uh, in Clipper, although it doesn't show it here, all X, Y, and Z values were 0 when I used 3.3 volts. So I found when I connected to five volts, I would get proper readings um, from the accelerometer. So here you can see on the spider uh, board, I'm not using the five volt RGB connector. And so I was able to pull the five volts I needed from there. Here you can see the actual connection to the five volt where the RGB connector should be. So all these instructions are at the measuring resonances section on the Clipper documentation. I have the link inserted below. And again, here's the diagram I use for the Pi. It talks about mounting the accelerometer. Um, of course, that depends on uh, the printer you've got. And then here's the software installation. You do have to install these NumPy parts um, uh, or code libraries. And um, you simply go in to your command line, you SSH into your Pi, and you just enter these in. Warning, these take a while. Um, really quite a long time to install, so you'll be waiting for a while. And a little bit here, it shows you what you should change in your printer CFG file, and I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, but before you do, do that, click on the Raspberry Pi microcontroller document to set up the Linux, the Linux MCU. And so what's happening here, you're going to set up your Raspberry Pi as a second motor control unit that Clipper can control. And remember, it can control multiple MCUs simultaneously. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to configure the pins so Clipper can use them on the Pi where the accelerometer is installed. And so you do have to install the script, which I just highlighted here. Make sure you go into Raspi config and enable SPI. Um, because that's the way, the high speed way that you're going to be able to communicate with the pins, or at least Clipper will. And then go ahead and build a microcontroller code as I've highlighted here. And um, I did not have to, you know, change user mod or anything like that. And then I actually went ahead and set up um, this install uh, GPIOD. You don't really have to. Um, ended up not being very useful, although it was interesting to run and see what was connected. Um, that's strictly optional. Then go back to the microcontroller pa controller page. And this is where we continue on with the printer CFG file. Just copy this text and we're going to paste it in the printer CFG file. So again, in this case, I'm using Fluid as the UI into Clipper. And while you can use any text editor, here I am using the editor um, that's built in. And here you can see um, where I added in the MCU RPI for the Raspberry Pi along with the path. 
Um, I also um, went in and set the accelerometer that I'm using, the chip, and also the probe point, which is where I want the print head to sit. Um, I have a 350 by 350 print bed, so that was roughly um, in the middle and a little bit off um, uh, the height. Here you can also see where I've set the maximum velocity and the maximum uh, uh, deceleration and acceleration as well. And um, again, that during the test, it actually asks you to set these to 7,000. And at one point, I set it to 10,000 to see what would happen. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see here um, input shaper, um, where the input shaper actually saved the values. And you shouldn't touch this yourself. Just um, rerun the auto test whenever you want to do this in the future, and it'll automatically adjust this here. And then just continue on uh, following the steps here. And um, here it shows you how to check the setup. Um, if uh, you set accelerometer query, just like this, enter it in. Uh, you should be able to see, um, by the way, you do this from Clipper, um, you should be able to get some values here. If you end up getting all zeros, which is what I was getting, um, you may have it plugged in the wrong voltage or you have um, a dead, uh, a dead um, accelerometer card. So you may have to switch to another one. Good thing the package came with three. <laughs> um, you can go through and follow all of this, but this is how you use the tools manually. And I think it's probably really worthwhile doing. You'd learn a lot, at least I'm sure I would. But I was just too excited and couldn't wait, and I wanted to see this thing work. So if you keep scrolling down, you'll get to the section called um, uh, Input Shaper Auto Calibration. And here, um, once you do, here you can hit Shaper uh, Calibrate um, from within Clipper, or if you're using Mainsail or Fluid, you run that and you will um, start to see uh, the test start to run through. Um, so it turns out the first accelerometer didn't work. So I had to cut it off, solder a new one on. Notice I didn't bother with all the shrink t uh, heat shrink tubing. And here you can see an actual automated test run. And you can hear uh, this vibrating. First you can see the motion, and then after a while you can no longer see it anymore, and you just hear the sound. And after a little while you actually start to hear the sound of panels shaking and anything else you might have loose on the printer. Um, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to tighten everything down before you do this. And also, my guess is we probably shouldn't be doing this very often um, because the vibrations are quite extensive. And be sure to hit stop if you think something's about to go wrong. Also, I speeded up this video by 200%, so this definitely takes a little longer than it appears here, uh, but it's definitely worth the wait. And then the y-axis auto calibration. And uh, pretty much the same as the other. It's much harder to see the movement here because it's, uh, well, it's the y-axis. It's moving in a different direction. Um, but you can definitely start to hear the noise. Um, at this point, this has actually been accelerated by a 200% because it's pretty boring. But again, to give you an idea of some of the noise that you hear, um, again, it's a good idea to tighten things down before you do this. So when that's done, simply click, uh, type in save underscore config and uh, restart Clipper. 
and uh, it will automatically make the changes um, and it'll automatically do this on its own every time you run it. There's also a max acceleration value um, that you can experiment with and it talks about that as well. Um, but it simply comes down to looking at the prints and deciding where you want to make the cut. So what do the results look like after an auto, auto calibration? Um, here you can see there's absolutely no rigging heading all the way up to 7,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. There are some minor other issues here that I've got to take care of, um, but it's not ringing. I do think one of them is a little bit of a loose belt. I decided to go ahead and try 10,000 acceleration, and as you can see, it just about looks the same. Um, if you look really closely, there are a couple of spots where there's some really, really minor ringing, but it's really hard to tell here in the video, and to be honest, it's hard to tell in real life. I think most people would be happy with that. Um, it's right about there where you can start to see it. This entire print was done at an acceleration of 10,000. Um, that's amazing. Um, here, um, here I went ahead and ran it at, uh, I believe it was 7,000. And I ran the speed up to uh, 150 millimeters per second as the standard print speed. And again, no ringing no issues it looks really good and because i had decided for whatever reason um that i was a little bit scared to run the printer full time at 10,000 acceleration that i was going to scale it back to about 6,000. um let me show you what that looked like here this is 6,000, but now this is 200 millimeter per second print speed and this is an awfully clean print again there's some other issues i need to take care of um, but uh, this is uh, 6,000 acceleration, uh, 10,000 millimeters per second print speed, and you really <laughs> you can't tell the difference. Um, I'm completely amazed. I'll be playing around with this a little bit more, and next I'll also start working on pressure advance, and I'm going to check some of the belts a little bit to make sure um, I've got those all tightened correctly. But overall, I'm just completely amazed, actually blown away by the results. This is way better than I was expecting. If you liked the video, please click subscribe. Thank you.